this video we prove a very interesting fact. If you have a finite set that is closed under an associative property and that both cancellation laws hold in G, then G is a group. Okay. Proof. If you like watching proofs like this, subscribe to my channel. This is all we do here. Okay, so let's see. To be a group, let's put it over here. To be a group, it has to be closed. It has to have the associative law. It has to have the ID element. And it has to have inverses. And G is finite. Okay, so they gave us closed and associative. G is, so let's say given. It is given. It is given that G is closed under multiplication and has the associative property. So, we have to show that it has an ID element and that it has inverses. And the only other thing that we can use is that this special G has the cancellation law and is closed. And is closed. So, let a, let's call it little g. Let little g be in g. And note that the order of g is finite. It's less than infinity. So how about we consider the set S? Consider S, which is g, g squared, g cubed, g to the fourth, etc. This here is in g because g is closed. Okay. Since the order of g is less than infinity, is finite, and it looks like s is infinite, but S lies in G. S is the subset of G. That implies that S has duplicate elements. It has duplications. Suppose G to the R equals G to the S, where R and S are natural numbers and say r is bigger than s. Okay. Since g has the cancellation laws, we have that. Now, on both sides, I'm going to kill off g to the s. You know, for example, if it's g to the 8 equals g to the 5, this here means that I'm composing g by itself 8 times, and over here, I'm composing g by itself 5 times, and I cross off 5 from each side, and I get g cubed equals the identity element. We have that g to the r minus s. This five, this three came from eight minus five. Eight minus five is equal to e, which is in g. Since not little g, but since big g is closed, since g is closed. But just like in the last video, 
if I multiply both sides by, uh, well, if I break off for g from here, I have g times g to the r minus s minus 1 is equal to e. But that implies that the left inverse, let's say left, left inverse of g is g to the r minus s minus 1. And I'm no expert on this, but maybe that's called the right inverse. Okay, so something's bothered. Okay, so I found the right inverse of g. And also, I can break off an s on a g on the right side. There it is, right here. And this is still e. That implies that g inverse, left inverse, is also g to the r minus s minus 1. It's good that they're both equal because inverses are supposed to be unique. So basically, g has left inverses and right inverses. So, g has, so, for all g in g, g has both a left and a right inverse. This implies g has inverses. For all G in G. And somewhere we show that E is in G. And inverses are in G. Let's go to our checklist. Yep, I checked off all four. G is a group. Therefore, G is a group. If you have closure and associative law along with both cancellation laws, you got yourself a group. If you like watching mathematical proofs like this, please subscribe to my channel. Click the like button. Tell your friends and families and enemies about my YouTube channel. See you guys in the next video. Watch and learn.